There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living hope. Your presence. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love when my heart becomes so free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit.
You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. you will not prosper hallelujah he is way maker and he will make a way he is promise keeper and he will keep his promise he is the light in this darkness and he will shine away he will light a path hallelujah let's glorify him this morning for being our God just for being God hallelujah I believe you are
that you are Jesus. I believe, I believe. Somebody just say, I believe in who you are. I believe in who you are. I believe in who you say you are. Oh, I believe, I believe. I believe in who you say you are. I believe, 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 I believe in the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, and that is who you are. Can everybody say that's what you still are? Always have been and always will be. How many of you feel a presence in this room that, a holy presence? You know, that presence is not just here without a purpose. It's here to meet every need that's in this room. And everybody in the room is going through something different. That's okay. God knows how to do everything. How many, he's a problem solver. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Aren't you glad he's still light? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Let's just speak it into our own life and say, Lord, I receive all that you are. To meet every need, present, and future. And I thank you. And I love you. And I'm going to give you glory today. Be praised. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, Lord. More victories and miracles and healings and answers happen in a moment's time in the presence of God than by every other force of the world put together. Take advantage of the presence of God that's here this morning. Allow him to have his will and his way to bless you. Zaley said he's not against you, he's for you. He's on your side. He's working all things for his glory and for your benefit. And we accept that today in Jesus' name. Thank you for your presence, O oh Lord. Thank you for your presence, O oh Lord. Come on, body of Christ, just worship the Lord a moment. listen closely. Something about the presence of God that brings back miracles from the past and testimonies. I was standing there and uh, as they were singing, how God was a miracle worker. And I remember when I was incarcerated doing a five-year bit and it was like two or three o'clock in the morning and I was battling and I needed the word and uh, I turned on the TV and there was a pastor, and it just happened to be Don Young, that came and gave me the word. And the word, it was a miracle working word. And I was so thankful that even in the midst of my darkness, he was still working it. And I thank you, and I thank my pastor for being faithful to the calling that he was given. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Thank you for placing me in this spirit of truth. I thank you. 
you and I praise you and I worship you this morning. And I will serve you wherever I go. Well, I didn't know he was going to share that part. <laughs> but how many of you know the Lord has the right person? It may not be on a TV screen. It could be the person right beside you fighting a different kind of a battle. But how many of you are glad the Lord is always there as that miracle worker, way maker, promise keeper, light in the darkness? Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand today for his presence. And let's give this team a nice appreciation today. I, I don't want to stop. I think we can just sing that song all day long and just benefit by the blessings that are there. Are you blessed today? How many of you enjoy this awesome music coming from that great keyboard right over there on the left? Brother John, we appreciate you so much. What a blessing you are. And we might as well mention his little baby boy over there on the drums. Daniel, we love you too. You may be seated if you like this morning. Would somebody say, I'm ready for what God has for me? Don't know what it is, but I want it. Because if God planned it, and if God wants it for me, how many know it's always more than I could plan for myself? I'm thankful that you're here today. I thank God for this season. This has been kind of a carryover season right now for Thanksgiving. I learned something this Thanksgiving that I don't want to eat like that every day of my life. <laughs> I can't stand two cubes of butter in one bowl of, bowl of mashed potatoes. I, how many know if that was true, you'd have to shove me through the door and grease the walls to get me in through the door. But how many of you enjoy celebration and the festivity of the times? And it all boils down to having family and love and the blessings that God has promised to us. I, I want you to get ready for something. This month, I believe, is going to be a very transitional month for us spiritually. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to begin kind of a series today on visiting and revisiting Christmas. How many of you know there's a reason that our Savior had to come? And the reason he came was not because he didn't have anything else to do. He came to meet a need. This may sound a little negative, but bear with me a minute. How many of we always say Jesus is the reason for the season, but really the reason was us. He was doing fine. He came for us. We were the reason for the pain. We were the reason for all of it. Aren't you glad he loves you like that? I love the scripture that says God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Not when we wanted him, asking for him, but while we didn't want him. When we didn't want to do anything with him or have him do anything with our life. How many glad the Lord knows his plan for your life? And I believe the best is yet to come. So we're going to prepare during the month of December. We're going to revisit Christmas and the purpose for it. Can somebody say, I need to learn this? So we're going to go way back, if you will, all the way to the book of, of beginnings, the book of Genesis, the second chapter. And I want you to get a hold of this. I know some say, well, I, I understand all about that. And I, I know all about the baby and the manger and the, the, the wise men and the shepherd. No, no, no. No, sometimes we don't realize there's things that we don't know. There's revelation that we have not yet received. And sometimes we don't know that there's some new ones in the kingdom that don't know any of it yet. So we're going to be patient. We're going to revisit. Say revisit Christmas. Now, this is very powerful, but I want you to notice a few things as we go along. And uh, if you will, chapter 2 of Genesis the heavens were finished, and all the host of them, the seventh day, God ended his work which he has made. He rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had made. I, I just got to explain this again. Can you imagine a God that can take absolutely nothing and make everything? And he's still God. I don't know why we think he can make the galaxies and every animal and the trees and vegetation. And somehow he just quit. How many? He hasn't quit. He's still God. Say it again. He's still God. He knows how, and he needs to. How many of you realize this is a powerful thing that God is doing? He is telling us, I have power to create all things. Verse number 7, the Lord God formed man uh, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And when God breathed into that, if you will, look like a, a mannequin laying on the ground, he breathed into his nostrils and that pile of dirt became a living soul. Wow, I don't know if that impresses you, but that impresses me. I've needed God to breathe, breathe into me a few times. I've needed him to breathe a healing breath or an encouraging breath or a, a deliverance or a victory breath into my life. Now, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he, he put the man whom he had formed. Uh, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the eye. I don't know about you, but I love the fall season uh, driving down between here and like Pennsylvania. Uh, I like to go in many of the remote areas of the south and see all the colors of the changing of the leaves. Uh, I, I even like the green ones that never change any other color. <laughs> see, I'm a California boy, so I have to throw that in. And even the desert, it, it's all beautiful. 
But look at this. It's, it's every tree that is pleasant to the, to the sight. See, God could have made them just look like rags, but he made everything beautiful. And it was good for food and tree of life. He, he made also in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I, I just got to say, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm overwhelmed when I, I look at a tree and I saw somebody plucking on television, t- pulling pomegranates or, or rather grapefruits. And I saw them plucking oranges. And I thought, isn't it amazing that God wanted to give us flavors? What if everything would just had no flavor? Just eat it. Don't have to put salt on it. Just eat it. Is anybody thankful for food? I have a question, but I'm not going to ask it right now. How many of you love food? So listen to this very closely. God made it beautiful for the eye, and then he made it good for us for for food. Then he did something that is is a phenomenal thing, and this is where we're going to land here for a few moments. And then he said, uh, I'm going to plant two more trees, and I'm going to plant the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And The Lord God took the man whom he had placed in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. But um, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. How many of you understand that there's reasons why God puts limits? Is it all right if God says no? How many remember when your parents said no when you are little and you didn't know why he said no and I, but I want it, or I, I like it. How many of you understand? There's a reason. Yes. Now, notice what God is saying. I'm going to put a tree of life right in the middle. How many of you realize right in the middle of your life, there's always one tree that you need to embrace? Yes. I want the tree of life. Amen. Now, here's here's hard part, but, but we'll get it in a few moments. He planted a tree that is life-giving, and he said that tree is a tree that I can't let you eat of it because if you eat of that tree, you'll live forever. See, they weren't allowed just to freely eat of that tree because God hadn't yet given them full will yet to do what they chose. He's doing this to show us all what humanity likes to do most. How many of you wish everybody loved to obey God all the time? Come on, I I hear you breathing. I know you're here. I want you to listen. And so when we get this, we realize God put one tree that is life and another tree. It's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a mixture. You know, the church world isn't in a mess when it is in a mess because of the good. It's the mixture. How many more right now in maybe in all of my life, and I'm preparing to celebrate the ending of 53 years of ministry, and I have never seen the church world accepting as much mixture. How many of you can't mix good with evil? Or it's no longer good and it's only partly evil because it's not recognized as evil because we see only the good. Be careful for people that are good on Sunday but ruin you by Wednesday. Come on, on, help me understand. I've been around ministries that did fabulous work in the pulpit but not so good during the week. And it wasn't the pulpit that messed up people. It was the during the week. Are you still here? We need to get rid of mixture. God said, I would rather you would be hot or cold. I would rather you be cold than to be mixed or lukewarm. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm going to say it. God is calling a church back to hot. He's calling a church back to pure. Because if we're not pure, the world is not going to find a pure God. If they have to find him through us, they're going to find a mixture. So you want to know what Christmas is all about? It's all about the fact that God is ready to fix us. When the babe came in the manger, he didn't come just so shepherds could come and wise men could come. He came so that he could fix the mixture mess. Because from Malachi, the last book of the Old Covenant, all the way to Matthew, some uh, 300 years or whatever, men had begun to mix the world with the church and religion and mix with the world until you couldn't recognize it. It got so mixed up that when God in flesh came, they didn't want him in the temple. That's mixed. So how many of you know God knows how to fix your mess and he knows how to fix your mix? That'll preach. Tweet that. How many of you right now realize you're blessed, but you also got some other stuff that's not blessed yet? Is anybody mixed up today? (laughs) Okay. I've learned that even at my old age, I still get confused once in a while. Most of the time it's about people. The Lord said you can eat of every tree, everything that bears fruit, you can have any of the the tree benefits. 
but, but there's one you can't have. Because when you eat it, you'll begin to die. The day that you eat it, and then the enemy comes along and says, well, you know what? That's not right. How many know the enemy will always try to get you to doubt God? So when the devil's talking, he's lying. I'm going to say that again. When he's talking, he's lying. Say it again. When he's talking, he's lying. And then it says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. I said, well, he didn't die. Man lived to be 969 years old. Well, how many realize Methuselah may have, but you won't. And I'll also tell you this other little problem. And sometimes when God chooses to do it, he can make one day last a thousand years. And in one of God's days, man has never lived one of God's days in the flesh. Why? Because I don't know what you think I would look like at 969 years old. I'd have so many facelifts that my belly button would be right up here. <laughs> okay, let's move right along. Just kind of grin at your neighbor and tell them there's two trees. One you want and one you already know about. How many of you know everything that's ever hurt you in your life didn't come from the tree of life? It came from the knowledge of good and mixed evil. So that's why we don't want that. How many of you don't want to eat of that tree in your family? How many of you would rather have it either don't want it at all or everything is wonderful? I don't want to mix. Matter of fact, if I'm going to serve God, I don't want to serve him halfway. He's not just a Sunday God to me. How many understand? I take him home. Amen. I told the people last week, when I get out of bed, before I get out of bed, before I ever throw my feet off uh, out from under the cover, I'm going to thank my God. I'm going to thank him first because you've got to praise him first. How many know we need to get back to a praise and worship lifestyle? So listen closely. And God said it's not good for the man to be alone. I'm going to make a help that is meat or fit for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and fowls of the air, brought him to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, uh, he named it. And then it says, verse 21, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof instead. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and he brought her to the man. Adam said, now... This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Everybody say, woe man. Because she was taken from man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. How many of this is stuff we don't talk about an awful lot? But here's the hard part and you'll get this. Don't over spiritualize. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. How many of you know there was no covering and they didn't need covering because it was just them? How many of you know that sometimes we don't realize we're in need because we're not in need until sin comes in? Amen. Amen. So God made a man, and then he made a woman. So how did he do that? Well, men, if you don't want God to make more women, don't ever go to sleep. <laughs> how many appreciate I want all, the, all, and all the men to say, thank God for women. Okay. All the women say, thank God for man. I thought it would be louder. I'm not talking about experience. I'm talking about how many appreciate that we are human beings and God has blessed us. Now listen very closely. Man, he said, she's bone of my bone. She's flesh of my flesh. And so the man is recognizing the blessing that God had given. And this is the hard part. Anytime God gives you a blessing, it also has to come with a probably a little pressure along with it. Every blessing comes with, with a little extra package. So look at chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman, yeah, hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Anybody ever have the devil question you? Well, that's not sin. Did, did God say you can? Maybe God doesn't talk over in this part of the country. The devil says, uh, yea, has, did God really, did God really say that? He's starting to nibble away at the good with evil. You shall not eat of every tree. And the woman said to the serpent, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the tree of the fruit which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. See, God said don't eat it. She got so excited, she said, I'm going to add a little bit and say don't even touch it. You know, there's something about this that we often pass quickly. But what I want to tell you this morning is that the devil is talking to you. Don't answer him. Amen. Well, I got a good report. I got a good reply. Don't even do it. How many of the Lord knows the word? 
better than us, for longer than us, and he'll try to twist it for us. Am I right? So don't argue with the devil. When the devil came to Jesus in temptation, he didn't argue. He said, it is written. It is already said. It has already been spoken. Lord, I love this. How many believe that every time you go into a trial, you don't have to try to figure it out? It's already figured out. You just have to rely on what thus saith the word of God. Aren't you glad the Lord has already spoken your salvation, your healing, your deliverance? you got to line up and believe it and claim your salvation. You got saved when you believed it. The Bible said you get healed when you believe you receive it. How many of you understand? He's just waiting for us to receive that gift. And I don't know how to say it any other way. I want to discourage you a minute. But as long as you live, the devil is going to talk to you. And he'll try new stuff. He'll try new temptations you've never been tempted with before. So the enemy comes and he says, God, did he really say you can't eat? Why would he do that to you? And please, this is the hard part. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. In other words, God is a liar. But he knows what you don't know, that the day you eat of it, your eyes are going to be open and, wow, you'll be like God's. And you'll know good, but it'll be mixed with evil. So it's not good. How many of you know good is not good if it's mixed with evil? Rat poison is, mostly it's just wheat or grain. It's just about... 10% or less poison. It's not the grain and the filler that gets you. It's the poison. It's mixture. Am I right? How many of you realize the enemy is not out to just come out and blatantly tell you lies? He mixes it. Well, you know, God, God shouldn't do that to you. He, he doesn't want you to be God like him. No, God is not trying to elevate himself above you. He's trying to keep you as a subject to bless you. Amen. He withholds no good thing from you, but he withholds evil mixture. Amen. How many of you understand the world is filled with an evil mixture? Yeah. Am I right? It's good that we have cars, but when you have cars, you also have accidents and death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Look at every good and perfect gift. There's a way it can be perverted to bring destruction. Everything that you have can harm you. We have guns. And one of our brothers is out looking for Bambi today or a deer. He's going to try to find some food for the table and some jerky for the pastor. But how many of you realize the gun that would kill the deer is also the one that people use on each other? How many know that most everything that we have that has a positive benefit also has a mixture and it can bring? Am I right about it? There's some people say, well, you know what? I need the medicine from the doctor. It's taking away my pain. That's a good thing when you're in great suffering. But how many of you take too much of it? It'll kill you. It's a balance. How many know the enemy will not tell you about the balance? He just throws the mixture toward you, hoping that he can kill you before you catch on to the lie. Is it true? So the devil is saying, well, you know, God says your eyes are going to be open. You'll be like God, and you'll know good and evil. You know, I, I don't know how it would feel if I was Adam or Eve. Never, never know anything but good. I'm not going to die. I can't die. I'm in the presence of the tree of life. I will live forever. Unless I decide to disobey God. Isn't it funny how disobeying God still brings trouble? Let's read this. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eye. Boy, that looks good. Boy, I know I'm not supposed to have it, but I want it. A tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit. I put in in parenthesis, she took the bait. Look at me. Was she going to get anything that she didn't already have? Any benefits? The only thing she was going to get is what would kill her. Right. Steal and destroy and rob and hate and hurt. Right. She was preparing now to take the bait for hate, unforgiveness, meanness, right. un- yeah. aggravation, sorrow. Because they were living in a place where they didn't have the evil yet. Right. Wow. She took the fruit and ate it and gave it to her husband and he did eat. The eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked so they... They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. There's a lot of history right here, a lot of uh, things we could share, but I want to stay on track. I want you to get this. 
When they knew they were naked because they disobeyed God, they tried to cover themselves up so God wouldn't see them. God knows what you're doing in the basement in the dark at midnight with the lights out. Because your sin is not what you do outwardly, it's what you're doing on the inside that's expressed on the outside. You might say, preacher, preach on, I need this. So what I'm hoping you'll do is begin to gravitate toward the tree, that, that, that life tree. Because how many know there is still a tree that people are eating of every day called the knowledge of good and evil? You can study. You can go on your online and learn how to do evil. You can go online and learn how to make a bomb. You can go online and learn how to join the terrorists. You can go online and know, know how to manipulate things that are normally made for good purpose and use it for evil. How many know there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil available to every one of us every day wherever you are? But you have to make up your mind, I'm not going there. Say it, I'm not going there anymore. And so they sewed fig leaves together and they covered themselves. And I just got to say it, your religion won't cover you. Formula won't cover you. Only going into obedience and receiving the word of God will cover you. Now, I, I love this because God was walking in, in the cool of the day. And when they got in the presence of God, the Lord called out to, to Adam and he said, where are you? How many of the Lord already knows, but he wants you to realize well, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. You can't hide yourself. If God knows everything, he knows where you are. And the Lord said to him, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree where have I commanded thee that you shouldn't eat? I mean, God knew that. He's trying to get him to confess it. Did you disobey? Has anybody ever lied to your parents? God, I thank you that I preach these people into perfection. And they lied, and they've been forgiven of that, so it's all into the blood. They'll never have to confess anything ever again. They're perfect. Thank you, Lord. I can go on. Not. Just take this. It's very important. Who, who told you you're naked? Did, did you disobey? And Adam says, well, you know, it was a woman. <laughs> I mean, no, that won't work. I'm going to talk to the men right now. Don't blame your wife. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Say it. Don't blame your wife. Well, the woman, you gave her to me. If you hadn't given her to me, she wouldn't have brought me the fruit, and I wouldn't have ate it. She gave of the tree, and I ate it. I don't know where she, he ever did argue. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The woman said, well, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. You know, it's the serpent's fault. Look at me. Don't believe blaming the devil. It's not his fault. You know he's a liar and a killer and a thief from the start. He only comes to do those three things, steal, kill, and destroy. Am I right? So when you're listening to him, that's what you're trying to buy into. Don't listen. I won't say it again. Don't listen. He has nothing to say. Come on, say it. He has nothing to say. He'll try to belittle your God and try to rob you of your promise. I love this. So God said to the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed above all the cattle and every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. How many understand we're dust, and he's still trying to chase us? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. How many realize there's a prophetic utterance in that where God is saying one day that woman is going to have a baby? And when that woman has a baby and a, hundreds of babies along the line, one of them is going to be named the Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, and the crucified one. He's going to crush your head so hard it's going to bruise your heel. I'm just taking liberties right there. Would somebody say, there's a reason Jesus had to come? Jesus had to come because of Adam. How many of them stayed obedient in the garden? We wouldn't even be here. So I'm kind of glad they did what they did so we could come along. And fight the same battles they're fighting, and every one of us have some time in our life failed just like they did. Am I right? So what's this got to do with Christmas? I'm glad you asked. I'm coming to that. And Adam, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of your wife and ate of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth, and... You shall eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shall you eat bread till you return to the, the ground. For out of it you were taken, and dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. How many realize we're not destined to be here forever? He is saying you're going to suffer and work. There's going to be thorns and thistles, and you're going to have to labor for your bread until you die. Adam called his wife's name Eve because she's the mother of all things, or all living. Well, that'll 
answer a lot of questions about all previous generations and future in that realm. How many know that God made man and woman? He made a husband and a wife. He made creation. Amen. Then unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and he clothed them. Stop right there. How many of you realize because sin came in, there had to be a sacrifice? I, I've never looked at it like this, but I want you to look at it in a new way. The very first representation of Christmas was when God brought two bloody lambskins and wrapped up a man and a woman. And what he was saying to them, I'm going to cover your sins because of a sacrificed lamb. Merry Christmas. Nothing but a sacrifice. And blood can cover your sin. Whew. How many of you know I still need to be covered with a sacrifice? Somebody that was innocent died for me. So all of this month we're going to begin to delve into things, situations are just a little bit different. I want you to look at this because it's so hard. We have to go back to the understanding. This is your father. This is my father. Which makes us all cousins. Is that real quiet right there? Unto Adam and his wife also did the Lord make coats of skins, and he clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed him in the east of the garden of Eden, cherubim, and the flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life, so Adam couldn't get back in. To the garden. I'm so thankful that even though it's been 2,000 years, I am thankful that one day I came down to an altar and I bowed my knee and I received the, the clothes of a bloody, if you will, a sacrificed lamb. And he wrapped me in his own blood and his own garment, his own flesh. He wrapped me in his own love and he gave me the opportunity to take a bite from the tree of life. Anybody here going to live forever? Amen. Just a few? It's altar time then. How many of you are going to live forever? So, well, what does it cost? It doesn't matter what it costs to live forever. It's worth everything. But he doesn't want everything. He just wants you to want it and come and get it. Everybody say, he just wants me to want it. Now, this, this is going to be a little bit different, but we're going to delve into some areas that I believe will really help to encourage us because when Adam is there living in his nakedness, he's got... Can I say it? I don't know if they were good at being seamstress, but how many know a fig leaf doesn't last very long? Am I right? Get out in the sun, it'll wither away, it'll, it'll shrink, it'll just get crispy and fall off. How many know you're still naked no matter what you did to cover yourself? It takes the blood and the Lamb of God to cover you. We know that we're all naked before God. We're all exposed before Him. But He doesn't choose to see our sin. He chooses to see the blood that has covered us and the sacrifice of the Lamb that has covered our life. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You got to understand it. We'll, we'll get into this, but I want you to please get it. God prepared a tree. If you eat of that tree, you live forever. We'll fast forward a long time into the future where Jesus is nailed to another tree. It was not the tree of life. It was a tree that had been cut down and died. And they hung the Savior, the real tree of life, on that tree of death. And now because we can come to the cross, we can have access to the gift of eternal life. Oh, precious is that flow that washes me white as snow. No other count I know. There's no other name I know but the name of Jesus. How many of you are glad that you have a little taste in your mouth for the, the life-giving tree? How many of you are hungry for another bite? Really, that's why we come to church, because we get hungry. Is that okay? We want a little presence. We want to hear the music and, and the song. It just lets us eat from the manna, from the table of God. i got to say it. I want to be in the presence of God more than ever in my life. I don't want to just hang out. I want to be in His presence. Brother Young, you're a little bit crazy. You go to church all the time. Yeah. But you got to go. You have to go. I don't have to go. I'm just a preacher. <laughs> Been a few times I just thought, well, I'll just sleep in. <laughs> the preacher that told his wife, they don't like me. Nobody wants me there anyway. He said, yeah, but you're the preacher. You got to go. Wouldn't it be funny if I just decided like some just not to go? And all of a sudden the praise team becomes the pastor for the day. 
How many of you, don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, how many of you love to be in the presence of God's people? Yeah, it shows. Does anybody like anybody else around you? <laughs> Should have got a whole lot more amens than that. Can I just say it one more time? I'm thankful. I'm thankful that even though Adam didn't know what to do for his sin, God knew what to do. When Adam was naked before God, tried to work things out himself, he didn't ask God to cover him. But all of a sudden he recognized, I have a need. I'm uncovered. How did he know that? Because the evil. How many know, anybody know there's evil with nakedness? I'm not trying to get anybody to shout me down right now, but how many know there's something evil about nakedness? But there's also something good. The good part is we have relationships, we have babies, we have family, we have a future. But the bad part is all the destruction and hate and wrong, perversions. How many know there's still mixture in the world? Look at me. You have to choose. Adam chose because Eve decided to choose. I can't blame it on Kathy. Every choice I make, I make it between me and God. When I stand before God, nobody's going to come and say, well, God, he was a really good guy. He liked me. He helped me out a lot. Pete's not going to come up and say, I watched him on TV from prison. I'm going to stand there by myself. And I'm not going to stand just for the good that I've done to be rewarded. I'm also going to stand there and God's going to reward or not for evil. I, must say, I thought you were the preacher. You're exempt from all of that. No, how many know I don't have to worry about that because all of my sin is buried? Not in denial, but it's buried in a blood vault. Anybody glad you're forgiven today? Amen. How many of you are forgiven? Amen. How many know you're forgiven? Amen. How many know no matter how much the devil tries to say, oh, there's, there's a better thing called mixture of good and evil. No, I've already got the good. Amen. I've got life. I don't want to mingle with death. Amen. Let me just say this. God has spoken and we know it, but we still do it. Every habit, with rare exception, that we get involved in, doesn't lengthen our days. It abbreviates life. Some habits don't kill you in a moment, but it abbreviates your life. I've been by people in hospital rooms, and they were talking about, I wish I hadn't had that habit. I wish I hadn't had that habit. I've abbreviated my life. How many know the choice is not now that you make that? It was when you first started. I like what Brother Price often says. He said, it's not the first drink that gets you. How many of you hear what I'm saying? It's the last one. It's not that first temptation to rob or steal or hate or whatever. It's the final thing that gets you into. How many believe that God knows how to wash it all away? Can he? How many of you would promise me today and promise your God that you're going to begin to look past that tree of the knowledge of good and evil and not even desire to mix up your good with evil? Amen. How many of you want to just head on over to the tree of life and say, when it's my time? That's a tree I'll be a part of forever. Bow your head for a moment. Father and our God, we're thankful today because we've never looked at the, the covering that you gave to our father Adam and his wife Eve. We don't recognize that much of being Christmas, but that means the, the lamb showed up. Years later, thousands of years later, he would show up in a little manger, but there's times along the way he had to show up as another type and a shadow as a covering for us. God, I thank you because you always make a way. You always have the power of provision. You always have every detail of everything that we need available to us. So I'm asking you, Father, to help everyone in this room to begin to realize that this week the devil is going to talk to us. And he's not going to point to life. He's never going to point to salvation or to the cross. He's always going to point to that old ugly tree that is gnarled with good and evil and try to get us to mix our life with good and evil. Father, I ask you to declare this into the spirit today so everyone in this room will not try to cover themselves with skins of natural covering or leaves when we have available to every one of us have available to us a fresh coat a bloody garment that you have covered us with for salvation's sake that's the reason you don't look upon us as sinners because we have been covered with your precious blood we accept it can everybody stand to your feet for just a moment today and i'm going to ask if you will to begin to look into your heart there's something significant about this season of the year I don't know how to say it any other way, but we recognize that there's been more of a, an attack against the body of Christ than we've ever seen in our life. 
As a matter of fact, I want to just say it this way. January uh, 31st, uh, December 31st last year, God gave us a word. And it was not just a simple word. Some didn't want to hear it because it was a simple word, yet profound, that said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. And all that's going to remain in your life is the kingdom. I'm going to shake out the obstacles. I'm going to shake out those wrong choices and decisions. I'll shake out all the mess. And all that will remain in your life is the kingdom principle. I've never seen such shaking in bodies and families and homes and children, a relationship with parents, health issues, attacks, temptations, bondages, as I've seen in this year. God's done miracles, and powerful miracles. One of her sisters shared a Sunday ago how that she went in for diagnosis, again, a final testing for several cancers in her, in her body. The doctor said to her, Donna, you don't have any cancer anywhere in your body any longer. You know why? Because God said, Donna, I'm going to give you Christmas right here in the middle of November. Every good and perfect gift, you can call it what you want, I'll call it Christmas. The coming of the Savior, the coming of the Healer, the coming of the Blessing. We watched on the screen a little bit earlier as the praise team began to sing to us. What a, what a beautiful song and what, what beautiful music. And I realized as I was looking at it, I thought, that's what Christmas is all about. We're revisiting Christmas and we're not going to just need a babe in a manger. We're going to see it a miracle worker, a way maker, a promise keeper, light in our darkness because that's what you still are. When you showed up in the garden to cover up Adam from his sin so he could still be in relationship with God and some level he could still talk to God though he was sinful you came along and said Merry Christmas Adam Merry Christmas Eve I'm going to cover you with the best gift my own blood he gave them the gift of life I feel like today I'm going to ask this and I want everybody in the room to be very attentive because I want you to listen as though I'm only talking to you if you need a savior today he's available I don't want to jump the gun 25 days, but I want to say it. Christmas is available. The Christ is available to you right now to give you the best gift in the world. Jesus didn't come to have fun. He came to die for you and die for me. He came to suffer for our sickness and our diseases. He came to bear our sorrows and our griefs. I feel like somebody in the room today needs to make a decision for yourself. He's not Father's God. He's not Mother's God. He's going to have to become yours. I thank God for the spirit of, of, of life that is here. Saints of God, please get it. Believer, hungry one, if you're here today wanting salvation, the tree of life is available to you. And if you don't choose it, you've already chosen the tree of good mixed with evil. Darkness, disease, trouble. That tree that provides no answer, no cure, no victory ever. A life ill spent. But if you need that Savior today, I want you to come and allow Him to be the Lord of your life. Just take a moment of time. It's, it's why we're here. It's why decades of ministry and traveling hundreds of thousands of miles, we labored to reach out and find one lost sheep, one hurting person. To find a situation that's out of control. To find someone that is willing to let the Lord be their benefit. To be their victory. To be their completion. There's some in the room that are struggling so hard today. Struggling so hard within. And nobody knows your struggle. Nobody knows the pain or the cause of it. But the burden that we bear, can I touch you just for a moment? Thank you, God. I want the body to be in agreement right now. Tell me the Lord is saying, I, I know the details and I'm available to Go to the root. And as my sister, I don't want you to live one more day having to bear the load that's heavy on your shoulders. Seems about the time the load is cleaned off, it seems like the dump truck comes and just loads you down again. And the Lord is saying, I am your tree of life today. That good and evil that has been poured down on you like a wind storm blowing leaves from that ugly tree has tormented thoughts and imaginations and hopes and dreams. And the Lord said, that is not where I'm going to let you stay. I'm bringing you under the shadow of the Most High, under the tree of life and victory. And I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I'm going to go to those that cannot help themselves. And I'm going to bring victory. I'm going to bring answers. And I'm going to stop the power of darkness. Father, I saw you today just pouring in oil and wine in her. I saw you breathing into her nostrils. 
not mouth to mouth, but I saw you literally putting your mouth spiritually over her nose to blow into her the very breath of a new beginning in life, peace and life and victory and joy. I thank you, Father, because today this battle that we've been fighting, it's not ours, it's yours. Because we can't bear this burden any longer. And Father, you told me years ago, the reason we say it's not our battle is because there's nothing we can do about it. God has to fight it. And because you cried out to the Lord and whispered a prayer, it thundered through the halls of heaven and God is saying, I heard your request and I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you and I will go like sparks from smitten steel and like light upon a prison exactly to where the victory needs to go. Mark it all down in a nutshell and just tell you, my sister, your prayer is not in vain. God has heard your cry. The weeping surely has endured for a night, but joy is coming. Joy is coming in the morning, and in this season you're going to be refreshed because you're going to find yourself resting under that cool, tall, refreshing tree of life. Not the fragrance and the hurts and the pains of the tree of the mixture. There's been enough evil mixed with good, and the Lord is saying, I'm removing it. I'm establishing my presence, bringing fullness of life. I rebuke the devourer, and I rebuke the cause behind it. I command you to live, and I command you to breathe, and I command you to only see with your eye what God says with his voice. Yes, you can see the word of God in your mind's eye. God allows us to hear a word and see it coming to pass in our spirit. I release you to the phenomena of miracles, manifestation in Jesus' name. And when you rejoice, we rejoice with you. When you weep, we cry along because love makes it happen. But I release you. That old fence is coming down. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a new dwelling place. I'm going to give you new grounds and new... Just saw the other day a cow cutting his neck on the barbed wire trying to get over where the grass was. The Lord said, you're not going to have to stretch for it any longer. I'm going to give you new grazing pastures, a place where you're satisfied, productive and effective, where the completion of your growth is fulfilled. I command it upon your life. Everybody say, the burden is off, the pressure is gone, and the victory has begun. For the kingdom's sake, in Jesus' name. Can all of us say, I believe, so I receive my miracle right now. For the glory of God. Let's lift holy hands and give God praise for just a minute. Thank Him for it. Gabby, I want to say one word to you here on, on your very special day. You know we love you and because of that I can say to you as one that cares. You're too valuable in the kingdom for the enemy to overshadow you with the other tree. There's so much good that God's already planned. And the enemy says, well, I can try to mess it up if I can get the good and evil working together. But God said, I'm going to begin to separate you from my glory. I believe you're willing to have the will and the plan of God for your life no matter what he has to do. And I believe that I'm seeing you right now taking steps away from that tree, away from the influences of hurt. We've already heard enough. We know what it's all about. The Lord said we will not manufacture or reproduce hurt, pain, rebellion, or sorrow. We're going to enjoy the benefits of the tree that we've chosen. Father, I ask you to give her a spiritual mind like she's never even been alerted or aware of before. God, let her recognize evil before she even hears it coming out of the mouth of the evildoer. Let her recognize righteousness when she sees it, even when it's still coming around the corner. Let her begin to embrace that part, Father, the good and the perfect gift. And I ask you to strengthen her for the joy of the journey. God, I praise you because I saw you fanning her gift, fanning her talent, fanning the call of God that's upon her life. And, Father, it will become such a joy like David. He could leave the Father's house and leave the lambs behind because I'm heading to the throne room. I'm heading to become a leader in the kingdom. I'm heading to bless thousands of people. I'm heading to have an authority word and a song that nobody else has been able to use to penetrate the broken hearts. Gabby, nobody can sing your song but you and nobody can sing it with the same unction and anointing that you have. It's a special, unique gift. We all have unique gifts. And the Lord said, your song is going to touch your gates that nobody else has been able to get into. It's going to unlock hearts that nobody else has the key to. 
That's why the struggle will be heavy for a season, but the victory is your choice. And I claim blessings with you. And I claim the promise to be manifested even beginning on this day. So, Father, instead of us just saying to her, happy birthday, 18 years old. We also say God is wrapping you with his presence. With the lambs covering. So, Merry Christmas. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Can everybody in agreement say in Jesus' name? I'm going to take a moment right here, Angela, while we're praying and agreeing together. God is saying he's going to make up for the past years of hurt. 2020 is going to be a year, everybody's already saying it, vision. But the Lord is going to let you see the benefit of what's been stolen from you. Multiplied in something that can never be stolen. What the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it around as a teaching tool and for the good and for his glory. You're not in charge of your house, God is. You're a powerful influence. And the Lord said, I'm rearranging all the things that I need to bless you. So when God moves you or changes anything, it's not to take away. It's to set you up to eat from the tree of life and of blessings. Joy that's unspeakable, blessings that could not come any other way. So I release you from your yesterday. I release you into your future by the power of the presence of the Lord. Can everybody in agreement say it together in Jesus' name? Come on, say it out loud. I believe that life is mine, that victory is mine. Whew, I've got to stop right now. Everybody raise up your right hand. I want to say one word. This may be oversimplified for some, but it is going to be exactly what you need. The Lord is saying, today I have rebuked the devourer that is trying to take your life prematurely. Well, you know, my family's always had this disease in it. You're not in that family any longer. You're in a new family. You're in a family that is of the blood and of the tree of life. Several in this room, your body has been susceptible to attacks physically to premature death. I rebuke premature death today. And I'm going to declare it for me and my house. I want you to declare it for you and your house. Will you say it? As for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. And I will live all my days. Say it. I will live all my days with health, with a clear mind, with blessings and prosperity, and with perfect peace. I will not die till I'm complete. And I will stand before him fulfilled. But only when it's his time. And the enemy has nothing to do with it. I will live and joy all the days of my life. Say it with me. Death, get on out of here. Life, we're going to eat your fruit every day. Mixture, we're spitting you out and kicking you out of the garden. You're not welcome and we're not listening. We've chosen our tree this day. If you believe it, let's clap our hands and give him praise today. Give him glory. Give him honor. His presence is so strong. His presence is so strong. Let, let's agree. Father, I just want you to just be right now with Julie. In this season right now, I ask as a particle of the body of Christ and her family spiritually, that in this season you're going to magnify your promise to her and you're going to let her reap for her faithfulness, her harvest. I thank you, God, because your word never falls to the ground, but you're going to prove yourself in new ways. We're not just asking physical things. Right now, we're asking spiritual benefits that last forever and forever. For everything and everyone that's a part of our life, turn it into blessings. We release her, Father, for the blessings that you planned. We call it all done in Jesus' name. Can all of us in agreement say, in Jesus' name and for his glory. Come on, say it again, for his glory. <sighs> Daniel, would you come up just a moment? I'm going to pick on you a moment if I can. I feel like something very strategic is happening. We're not aw unaware of, of attacks. How many would be honest to say this with me? There's attack coming against my family lately, my body lately. How many of you are willing for God to bring forth victories? Say it out loud. We're going to see victories. Now, let's just say it. God's already promised deliverance. And it's a process. 
Don't miss that. It's a process. When God gave us a word a few weeks ago, he said, I will rebuke the spirit of self-destruction. How many know every bondage, every habit, all that is premature death? The boy threw himself in the fire. He had a self-destructive spirit. What did Jesus say? That kind only is taken out by fasting and prayer. So the body of Christ is joined in fasting and prayer, and it's going to work completely. Amen. Say it. We're going to get it all back. All right. Daniel, I don't know how you were, you were playing today, and I listened as music was going forth. I don't know how exactly God is going to weave this in, but you will never be far from ministry to broken lives. And because of the freedom of the Holy Spirit that God's placed in your life, you have the tools to set those that are still bound into freedom. I don't know if it's a counseling part. I do know some of your story, and we've shared a little bit, but I believe that God's going to begin to make possible financially an opportunity for you to instruct. People need to be caught when they fall. People need to know how to get up when they're struggling. And I don't know anyone that has the more compassion or compassion from God's kingdom to pour into broken humanity than God has given to you. So what has brought you to this place, it's not bad because it turned for the good. God said, I am working it all for my glory, and I'm going to let golden words come out of your mouth and pearls of wisdom come out of your speech. And I'm going to cause you to begin to put people back together again and give them the right word at the right time in the right season. And the Lord, I just ask, I don't know how you're going to do it, Father, but I personally am very selfish. I want you to prosper Daniel far beyond his imagination so he just has time to minister to broken people. God, he's strong and he can pour concrete and he can do all that. But I want him to have time to minister. I want him to have time without being worn down. I want him to have time to mend broken lives and broken hearts. And I know he's going to be very instrumental because everyone that walks through these doors or a part of the spirit of truth, I will guide them to him because I know he's a fountain of life. He's a fountain of compassion. He's a fountain of victory. And I ask you, Father, open up opportunities that he's never even thought of. And Father, for those mighty men of God that have been a part of his life, somehow I know they'll benefit and they'll be influential and they know that they have a, a compassion from God and they recognize the call of God that's upon his life. So I'm not only honored to call him my friend, I'm thankful that he's counselor. I'm thankful, Father, because he's compassionate caregiver. Father, he doesn't care to get his hands dirty, scooping it underneath the dirt where people have fallen to lift them back into the kingdom and let them have a let him have a taste from the tree of life. Father, I'm just asking for a blessing, opportunities and provision to come for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Would everybody say, Lord, before you bless him, bless me. Come on, say it. Before you prosper him, prosper him. Give him an open door and the tools of ministry with great ease, Flow like a river, Father. Bring people to this tree of life. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God some praise. Give Him some glory. Give Him some honor. He's worthy. Magnify the Lord for a moment. Magnify His name. Whew. His mom and daddy are here today. I'm glad they're here. God delivered them from Ecuador. <laughs> you know, Tammy, when I when, when I talked to your daddy the first time a couple decades ago, and he did some trench work back out to Wesley Hall, I had no clue we'd meet family. How many of God already knew? Father, I thank you for what you're doing for for John and for Tammy. Last week, I saw harvest coming up everywhere they've gone. I saw their footprints across the other countries, and I saw those footprints turning like just all the seed just growing like oak trees, redwood forests, just growing exponentially. Father, I want you to take the load off of them. I want you to make their ministry easy. Prosper and bless them so that what would be done with pain will not have to have the pain part. Make easy their load. They're to benefit, show for the kingdom. To have to struggle in any area. 
Let them be able to do everything that's in their heart. Come on, body of Christ, say everything that's in their heart. Make it easy, fulfilling, rewarding, and complete in Jesus' name. Come on, look over at your neighbor and tell them everything's going to be all right. Even that. Say it. Even that. Come on, say it. Even that. And you may be seated for just a moment if you'd like. I, I don't want you to be alarmed because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I want you to be alarmed for those that are not willing to accept the truth. How many know the truth will make you free? It will make you free. Give you an opportunity. Everybody say, he's still way maker. Merry Christmas. He's miracle worker. Merry Christmas. He's promise keeper. Merry Christmas. Some of my best Christmas were not under a tree somewhere in somebody's house with flickering lights. Some of my best Christmases were when I found a family member that got saved in the dungeon. When a loved one got healed in the hospital. How many of we ought to start saying to each other every time a miracle happens, Merry Christmas. I heard you, Linda. Merry Jesus. Everybody say, Merry Jesus. How many realize he came to suffer? To do what? To be a miracle worker, a way maker, a promise keeper, a light. How many understand he's going to be Christmas for you every day of your life? Are you ready for that? Why can't every day be like, okay, I won't sing. How many realize if every day was like Christmas, it's supposed to be? Because every day the Lord is going to be our answer, our victory. Would somebody say, preacher, I got it.